Hello guys, welcome back to Paper Whisper. Today I'm showing you another part of the design tutorial, uh, origami design tutorial. How to make your models, no matter how complex the design, or however you want to make them. An example would be great, but I don't feel like me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of lazy, and never mind, no man. I'm sorry, I don't mean that, but um, it's kind of complicated. So, basically, what I'll be showing you will be the example. So, well, I had an idea of making a drummer boy. And so, I made that, but, yeah. So, um, I don't know where that is, so, basically, instead, I'm just gonna make something else today. So, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make, um, your own models, humanoid figures specifically, which is what I'm best at, honestly. But, this will only be a part one of the tutorial, because there's only so much I can do with this, you know, time period. So, um, especially since there's a lot going on. So, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make a square. How to make um how, sorry how to make a square then how to make a grid and then uh, from there I'll show you the basic three thing main things I like to use in box plate which will be the part one so let's start by making the square off and the main proof of this tutorial the main part the main point of this tutorial will be indeed right not indeed will be to make sure that everyone knows that you can use two materials to make beautiful art you do not need ridiculously expensive paper now with that said I do still have pretty nice paper on my shop. Check out the closest stick and crafty at on Etsy. So that's about it. So um, what we can do is we're gonna fold it diagonal and then unfold it. Basically, the short edge goes to the long edge. Rotate it ninety degrees, whatever direction, so that the the, the um the X is at the bottom. We're gonna fold from where this crease ends. Oh, and we're gonna fold from there. A little pinch there. And make sure that's straight all the way to the other side so all the edges line. Turn over. Let's make that strong crease so it should be a mountain fold. A tiny tear at the top. If I'm, going to, if I'm going fast, feel free to fix. Feel free to go a bit slower if you want. Or slow down the video, you know. Oh, pause. Whatever you like. But, yeah. So, um, also, um, what I'm going to do next. Let me change the angle of this bit so that it's a little bright. Sorry about that. So now I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to use a simple for this tutorial. We'll make a 16 by 16 grid. Which may not sound like, which may sound like a lot. There's 256 squares, but eh, it's actually not that much in order on me. So, um, I'm going to fold it in half, unfold, fold edge to the middle, fold one of the edges to the crease you just made, and then fold that edge that, that is new from that crease to the, that same crease, not to the middle now, but to the same crease you just did, here, and then you're good, Wait, sorry, so, what we're going to do now, is, we're going to unfold, and rotate 90 degrees, and repeat in the other direction, oh, sorry, I should be taking the other three sides, And just like that, our 16 by 16 grid is done. So what we're going to do next is I am going to grab a pencil, and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so now I have my pencil. Sorry about the intermission. Um, my computer died, so yeah. So um, basically, now what we're going to do is kind of graph out what basically it looks like on the um, on this drawing of what it would look like to do each of these types of box bleeding types, I guess. First type the base, very basic type that you probably see in most origami models that use box pleat, the box pleating technique. Looks something like this. Then, there's another type where you kind of add, kind of like make a square type thing that you use in a lot of my models. It looks something like this.
We also sometimes known as pleat sink. A pleat sink is when you kind of go into smaller and smaller squares or whatever shape you're doing. It's pretty simple. I'll fold all of these anyways. And the last one is a little angled. I call this one the, I don't know, the bisector or something? Who knows? Either way, it's a little different than most of them. You see, you can do this at any angle. The nice thing about this is it's a little different. If I were trying to bring these together, it wouldn't really work, would it? Because I'd have to, these just simply don't connect. Kind of like in the game, um, what's it called? Um, I don't care what it's called. I'm sorry, I don't remember what it's called. So I'm just going to show you. Like, it, doesn't, it just doesn't work like that, nor it got me, in, usually. So what we're going to do instead is something I like to call, um, well, there's many ways to do this, but we could use, we could, well, well, the main, three main types I'm going to go over with are the closed pleat sink, the open pleat sink, this is, I call these my own names, I don't think they're actually official, and then I have a little different thing. There's a half open, a half closed, and then there's mine, which I mean not mine, but there's a way I use it where you can actually make it a different angle and it would still work, which is I find very fascinating. Interesting, right? So now what we're going to do is this is going to go here, and so basically what would happen is this wheel here, this would go here, and we, this would go a bit further, actually. So, and then we do something along the lines of, let's see, oops, I probably noticed this now, actually. So basically what would happen is this would actually kind of do some, like, more like this, actually. It's a little complicated, but I'll show that in a sec. It's a little more than you might need, but it's still a good idea if you need to use it. And that makes them look a bit like this. So, I'm going to fold all these just as a demonstration, and this would, I guess, would go over here. Perfect. Let's change one last thing. That would be more like that, actually. If you don't understand any of these, that's completely fine. I'll explain them all, I guess. I'm getting, of course, I'm going to explain them all. Sorry, I'm going to rephrase it. Not rephrase, redraw this. A bit. Okay, so we're going to go along all these creases and show you what exactly each of them look like, and then we'll be done for the, for the day. So, what we're going to do is we're going to fold. Basically, how this one is collapsed is you're usually, I usually don't collapse my model, so I can freeze my models. If I just kind of waste my time when I can freeze them off, anyways, but. And some more ops may disagree. A lot of our ops may disagree with me usually. I've at least boxed the box two models. I usually design in my head, so it doesn't really work out for me. Especially when you're trying to draw it out. I have a hard time getting things out on paper, literally. <laughs> okay, so now that we've done this, this is what the one at the very edge of the corner looks like. Now, this one. It's going to be a little different, but we'll do that one last, actually, because it's a little more complicated. Sophisticated, whatever you want to think, of, however you want to think about it. Now, this one's a little more fun, maybe simpler if you want to go on the beginner side. Because this one can be elaborated, sorry, not elaborated, can be used in many things. However, this one is only just to make, like, a bunch of flaps. It's usually used when you're just trying to collapse paper pretty simply. It's not used very much, personally, in my models, but it works. It's kind of going to give you, let's see, it's kind of going to give you four flaps. If you assume you're reading the whole paper. One, two, three, and four. Now, the fun stuff comes with this one. This one I don't use also. This one I also don't use my model very often, but I still use them somewhat still. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this. Let's assume we're folding this here, and I'm going to push this down. I'm going to push this here. I'm going to make a mountain close the first two, play normal. The last next, the next parts are going to be a little different. We're going to fit it all in this smaller space. I probably should trim it right down so you can see it a bit better. There we go, that's perfect. So, I have this crease, this crease, they're going together. And then, what we're going to do, is we're going to fold this one and this one. Oops, that's way off, sorry, one second. We're going to fold this one and this one. Sorry, I didn't draw that out, that didn't look right. Okay, so, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the two edges the two very furthest creases away. Sorry, the two closest creases that one in the middle, I misspoke. Um, and I'm going to make it so that they kind of collect, connect something like this. So let me show you again. Looks like this. It's kind of hard to describe, so I'm just going to say talk and not talk for it now.
you to repeat on the other side. The last thing you have to do is kind of implement the last parts together. Sure, a little even more complicated than this usually is, but still. Sophisticated, whatever. Sorry. When you're making a really, really crazy model, this will really come in handy. Because, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, honestly. So now, we have a two-piece black, or a two-piece arm or something. This could be like a big toe or something of a foot. This one's a bit higher, which is pretty cool. And the last thing is we have this piece. And that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day. See you next time. Bye.